Welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it's all connected. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe, like, share, all those good things. So today we're going to be talking about another antibody or a collection of antibodies and one that I know can create a lot of confusion. I say that with everything. That's because pretty much all of rheumatology can create a lot of confusion. And that is the ANCA an antibodies. A-N-C-A. -A, ANCA. What are they? Why do we check them? What do, we, what do they mean? We're going to get into all of that. So stick around. <laughs> with the basics. What is the ANCA antibody? So ANCA is ANCA, anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. I know. So if you just break down the word, it kind of tells you what it is. So neutrophil is a type of white blood cell. And you'll remember that the white blood cells are the cells of our immune system. Then there are lots of different types of white blood cells. And neutrophil is one of those types of white blood cells. Cytoplasmic is talking about where in the cell we find these antibodies and the antigens to these for these antibodies. So if we take a step back and we think about the ANA, which if you have no idea what I'm talking about, make sure you check out those videos. But the ANA stands for anti-nuclear antibody. So nuclear meaning that it's found in the nucleus. So if we think about the cell, we have a nucleus and we have cytoplasm. And to really, really like bring it down, the nucleus of the cell is like the brain of the cell, and the cytoplasm is like the jelly around <laughs> around the nucleus, like within the cell. And that's like biology teachers and whatever, please don't come after me because I know that is like so simplif simplified, but that's basically what it is. So these antibodies are antibodies to components that are found within the cytoplasm of our neutrophils. So within the cytoplasm of a certain type of white blood cell. So ANCA, anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. Now, there are different types of ANCAs. Similar to when we talked about the ANA and how there are different types of ANAs, there are different types of ANCAs. The term ANCA is kind of a, an umbrella term that describes a lot of different types of antibodies. And all the antibodies that are considered ANCAs are antibodies directed at antigens or proteins that are found within the cytoplasm of these neutrophils. So when someone finds out that they are ANCA positive or a blood test showed that they had the presence of an ANCA, that's really only the first step. And at that point, we then need to dig a little deeper and find out, well, what type of ANCA is it? And is it a type of ANCA that we worry about? And what would cause us to worry? Well, we know that there are certain conditions that are associated with certain types of ANCAs. And so first we want to find out, well, is the type of ANCA that is showing up on this blood test actually one of the ANCAs that is associated with a condition? All right, so then what conditions are associated with ANCAs? And just from the name of this video, it's going to be vasculitis. You should know it's vasculitis. So what is vasculitis? Well, again, you break down the word. Vascu is for blood vessels, specifically arteries, and itis is inflammation. So the term vasculitis really just means a condition in which the blood vessels are inflamed. Now, vasculitis in and of itself is a feature of a lot of different conditions. You can have vasculitis in lupus, in things like myositis, in different types of arthritis. You can have vasculitis with different types of infections and cancers, and you can even develop vasculitis after using certain drugs or certain medications. So vasculitis, that word in and of itself, is not a particular type of condition. But there are certain autoimmune vasculitides <laughs> that um, that we take care of in rheumatology and that are the main feature of those conditions is vasculitis. In rheumatology, when we think about vasculitis, the way we frame it in our head is we divide up the conditions based on the size of the artery that is being affected or that is inflamed. 
So we have large arteries, medium arteries, and small arteries. And the reason we do this is because usually when someone has one of these autoimmune vasculitides, whether it's a small, medium, or large type vasculitis, their signs and symptoms are all going to be a result of that sized artery being inflamed only. Does that make any sense? So if you have, let's say, a large vessel, a large artery vasculitis, you will most likely only have problems with the large blood vessels. On the other end, if you have a small blood vessel vasculitis, your condition, the issues surrounding your condition will all be related to small blood vessels. It's very uncommon, though not impossible, but uncommon to have issues with both large and small or a medium and large, etc. So that's how we kind of think about it in rheumatology and how we divide it up. So we have large and medium and small blood vessel vasculitis. When we're talking about ANCA, the type of vasculitis we're talking about is going to be the small blood vessel vasculitis. And within that category of vasculitides, there are, is a subset of conditions that are specifically associated with ANCA. I hope that made sense. So we have different types of vasculitis, different types of autoimmune vasculitic conditions. We divide them up based on the size of the artery that's being affected. And within the small vessel vasculitis category, we have some conditions that we know are associated with the presence of these ANCA antibodies. Okay, so what are these conditions? So we call these ANCA-associated vasculitides, which we don't actually say they're small vessel because it's assumed they're small vessel because ANCA is only associated with small vessel vasculitis. And so what are they? So get ready for some really big words and I'm gonna try not to mess them up. So the first one is granulomatosis polyangiitis. I know. So GPA, it was previously called Wegner's granulomatosis or Wegner's, but we don't call that anymore. We say GPA. The other one is going to be microscopic polyangiitis or MPA. And the last one is going to be the biggest one. It's eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, EGPA, formerly known as Church-Strauss syndrome. So those are the three main types of autoimmune vasculitic conditions that we're thinking about whenever someone has a positive ANCA. All right, so then how do we interpret this result? How do we interpret the results of the ANCA? Well, as I said, just having a positive ANCA, similarly to having a positive ANA, doesn't tell us a lot of information. We need to keep digging and find out what type of ANCA that is. Now, if you remember, when we're talking about an antibody, every antibody has its antigen or has the target that it attacks or that it, it, it targets. <laughs> and so the two targets, the two antigens that we're most concerned about when it comes to vasculitides are going to be these two proteins called myeloperoxidase or MPO and protonase 3 or PR3. So these are the two targets of the ANCAs that we worry about or that we know have the closest association with these particular conditions. So how can we tell if the ANCA that the blood test found is an ANCA specific to those particular targets? Well, one way we can tell is based on the staining pattern. Again, we talk about this with the ANA. When you get an ANA result, you get not only a titer, but you get a staining pattern. And that can be speckled or homogenous or nucleolar. And basically, that's just what the pathologist sees in the microscope once they stain it with all their fancy stains and they can see what it looks like. And it'll look speckled or it'll look cytoplasmic. So a similar thing with ANCA. So they do their fancy staining, they look under the microscope, and there's two patterns of staining that then we can infer what is the target of those ANCAs. So you have cytoplasmic staining, which is called C ANCA, and you have perinuclear staining, which is called P ANCA. Now again, this is determined by a pathologist, which is a human looking at the cells under a microscope, which means it's subject to interpretation and human error. 
So although there have been a lot of validated studies, and, and this is something that we've been doing for a long time, it's still, you have to take, you'd have to still take into account that it's done by a human. So the interpretation of a C anchor or a P anchor isn't perfect, but we've been using it forever. So if someone's staining pattern is cytoplasmic and that therefore is categorized as having a C anchor, we know that C ANCAs are most likely and most closely related to the presence of that proteinase 3 target. So if someone is C ANCA, then they most likely are going to be PR3 positive. If someone is P ANCA and their staining was perinuclear, then that is most closely associated with the myeloperoxidase or MPO. It's not perfect though. We certainly see C ANCAs in particular that can also be associated with MPOs. So thankfully, we can also actually directly test for these antigens, for these targets. So you can actually test for the presence of the myeloperoxidase MPO and the proteinase 3 PR3. So when you get an ANCA result, you actually need to have a lot more information to know what to do with it. You need to have the ANCA, you need to have the staining and then that determination. So is it a C anchor or a P anchor? And then you need to have the direct test looking for those particular, those two particular antigens or targets, PR3 and MPO. Without all that information, you really, it's very difficult to interpret and know what to do with the positive anchor. Okay, so let's say you get all those tests, you've got all the tests lined up and something came back positive. Does having a positive ANCA, having a positive C or P ANCA, and the presence of a PR3 or MPO, does that mean you have vasculitis? No, it doesn't. So just like 90% of the autoantibodies we talk about in rheumatology, ANCA has their problems too, in that they can be seen in a lot of other conditions. They can be seen in other autoimmune conditions like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, infections, cancers. So just because you have the presence of those antibodies doesn't really mean, doesn't make the diagnosis of vasculitis. And we always have to take the result of the blood test in context with the actual human. What is going on with the person? What are the signs? What are the symptoms? What are they feeling? What are the other blood tests showing? And when it comes to ANCA, it really is dependent on what we call the pretest probability, meaning that the doctor has to already be considering that perhaps this person has a vasculitis to then make the ANCA result meaningful. Now, how could you help your doctor kind of formulate their list in their head about what's high and what's low on the probability? And that's having a good symptom list. You know, a lot of us come in with this long list of symptoms, but there is a way we can organize it that will really help your doctor understand what's most pressing, what's maybe not as pressing, it's not as, um, the symptom might not be as often, um, what really needs our most attention, and that helps the doctor kind of formulate their list in their head, which then helps them interpret your blood tests. And if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about or how to do it, I would really recommend checking out the Productive Rheumatology Appointment Guide that we've put together. You can find the link in the description box below. It is a free online course that kind of takes you through how to think about your symptoms, how to talk with your doctor about the diagnosis that they're, you're working towards, about the treatments that they are offering you, and then how to make the most out of these really short appointments we have. So I really hope you check it out. Um, it's in the description box below. And then finally, I wanna talk about this atypical ANCA result, which for rheumatologists can be the pain of our existence. So it's not uncommon for you or for anyone to have slew of antibodies checked when you go in for any number of symptoms and it might be that ANCA is in that big long list of antibodies that are checked and sometimes you don't get a result that is C and P ANCA and MPO and PR3. Instead what you get is a result that says atypical ANCA. So what does atypical ANCA mean? Well 
It means that when they did their fancy staining, the pathologist looked under the microscope and it didn't look cytoplasmic, and so they couldn't label it C. anca, and it didn't look perinuclear, so they couldn't label it P. anca, and basically they said, ah, who the hell knows? It's just not one of the typical ANCAs we see. So what does that mean? Does that mean that we should pay attention to it, not pay attention to it? Again, it comes down to how you're feeling and what's going on with you. If someone really doesn't have any signs or symptoms concerning for vasculitis, then we tend to not put too much weight on an atypical ANCA result. But again, it depends on what's going on with you and what the symptoms are. All right, so that's just a quick rundown on ANCA antibodies, how we test them, what we're actually looking for, and what they could mean and how we interpret them. I hope this wasn't too like medically. Um, ANCA antibodies, even for doctors in training and medical students can be a little confusing. Um, really tried my best to kind of bring it down so that you can interpret your labs and have a discussion about the labs with your doctor, which is really the most important thing. Um, you know, I always like to give little um, tidbits of what you can talk about with your doctor if you find yourself kind of facing this positive lab. And I would just recommend making sure that you have all of those things checked, that you had the screening for the ANCA. If it was positive, that they went and looked specifically for the C ANCA and P ANCA, and that they also looked specifically for the presence of the PR3 and MPO. All three of those are super important when interpreting the results. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure you like this video. If you like this kind of content, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, mental health and wellness. We think it's all connected. So if you like that, hit subscribe, share it with anyone you know who might benefit from this information, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.